in yep. for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen show, and it just came across as my girl full of report. And here's what he asked uh, Diablo Lenore his thoughts. Diablo Lenore, this was not a setup, okay? This this literally hit as I'm <laughs> as I'm getting you up on the Zoom call here, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, fourteen how you doing? seconds ago. Oh no, this can be true. This is this is the truth. Despite a recent meeting, the Niners haven't been willing to engage in negotiations since May. So Ayuk has respectfully asked out. Now I, I don't want to put you you know on the spot to speak for your teammate here, Diamador, but you've you you've watched him play the past few years. You've guarded him in training camp. How important is that guy to your team? How important is it to to figure a way to work this thing out? Uh, he's extremely important to our offense. You know the, the stuff he can do. The amount of targets he had in the production, you know, is is kind of second to none. So with just hearing that news, it's kind of crazy. All right. And then, Lenore, on the contract negotiations and what Ayuk means to the 49ers. You know, at the end of the day, we feel like we go out there, we risk our bodies, you know, uh, to play the game we love. And we kind of deserve, you know, what we ask for. But for Ayuk, you know, he's a big part of this team. You know, uh, one of the reasons why we even made it this far, you know, thus far to the Super Bowl, you know, without his uh, contribution, you know, to the team, you know, he mean a lot to us. So I know I'm banging on it, getting getting the job done. You know, we was two for two with Debo and Bosa. So I feel like we, you know, there's going to be some type of agreement that comes soon. All right, that's the Yamada Lenore on the Rich Eisen podcast. Of course, again, Tim, Tom Palacero was filling in for Rich Eisen there. So that was in real time. And, you know, somebody may say, well, what is his teammate going to say about him? Of course he's going to say that about him. But he did say something that's very important. And I think the big takeaway from the receiver doc and from the quarterback doc is they do risk their bodies. What they put their bodies through every single week to get ready for a game. And you see why they're paid the way they're paid. Like Debo Samuel basically said, I'm not playing with no broken bones. Skyford was shot. <laughs> Got popped one time by Juan Thornhill, and he was out for three weeks. So the risk of, you know, if you don't have your money, if you don't, and now Debo again was in a sec- different position because he was a second-round pick, and he plays a different band of football. But I get where Brandon Ayuk's coming from. He's seeing all these receivers around him, and he tried to get out ahead of it, knowing that, hey, it's my turn next. I just had a career season with the quarterback who had a career year. Where's my neck? Because the quarterback will get paid. He will get paid. Brock Purdy's going to get his $60 million a year, and I already know what the pivot is next year when he gets that money. Well, damn, we paid the quarterback too much. It's all about D. Ball and McCaffrey. That's a conversation we're going to have 12 months from now. You already know how this works, Shasky. You know how it works. I, I, I just I keep coming back to it's about team building, and when you're putting together your roster, you can only afford so much across the board. And if you're building a team for Kyle Shanahan, are you putting – $60 million into just the wide receiver position with two guys. Do you put the do you put $60 million into the quarterback? No, I'm asking you. Yes, I would. I would if they're dynamic. On a Kyle Shanahan it, team. It, it, absolutely. If they're dynamic, because we see what has failed the 49ers late in these playoff games when it's winning time in uh-huh. these big games. What has failed them, Shasky? Well, I, I would say some of their drop back passing game. But but I would also say that they don't even get that far without competent quarterback play. The years that they haven't had competent quarterback play, they aren't even sniffing the playoffs. When it's Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard and Brian Hoyer, uh, you know they they're nowhere the, near the playoffs. But the roster wasn't that good around them yet. They were still building the Tony, roster. Tony around. was the same they roster. They were building the roster around. The, Nick Willis stunk, and they opened the season. With, <laughs> but that's who they that's, opened the season with: Kendrick Bourne, Dante Pettis, and Trent Taylor, wide receiver. We do have a story. Yeah, if I learned anything about the NFL, it's that like you, if you pay the quarterback and, and you think you have a good one, you can rotate some of the pieces around them. Not right. all of them, but yeah. some of the pieces. And if you're going to pay a quarterback, even if you're going to give him thirty million dollars, Brock Purdy, forget sixty. Let's say it's even thirty. Monty, you're still going to have tough decisions, and you're going to need to get cheaper at the skill position no p- doubt. spots. No doubt, right? Like at some so, point, that was part of. So like, let me ask you then. Not to cut you off, but let me ask you then, because that's where we're going to come to at some point. It is about the quarterback. This all, everything, yeah. it all comes back to the quarterback. You're not paying this guy because of the quarterback. Mm-hmm. You got to save money because of the quarterback. You got to do this because of the quarterback. Are we sure, 100% sure, we're ready to pay this quarterback top five quarterback money? I don't even know if they're ready to, like, they, they could say all they want, but until they actually do it, you know. I, I think it's still up for debate. Look, again, I went back to this on, on Brock Purdy. They might carve out $60 million for him, 
but he might have a down year and they're like, oh, well, actually, we're only going to give you 38 million. Just hypothetically, <laughs> we're going to give you 38. And now we can keep Dion or Lenore. Now we can keep Charvarius. Well, then what does Brock Purdy say about that? What's that? What does his agent say about that? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we need to, right? And so, and, 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 Bonte, it's also con conceivable that some other quarterback gets $75 million a year, as in Dak Prescott. Well, I'm sorry. I'm taking Brock Purdy over Dak Prescott. That's fair. Right? That's fair. So he might want $80 million, and they've budgeted for 60 And you might have to bid adieu to Trent Williams, too, or CMC, or d -Bard. Like I, They're going to lot. have to flip this thing up. When Joe Montana won his first Super Bowl, he was throwing to Freddie Solomon right. and Dwight Clark. But it's a different time, Shaskis. 1981, the game was yeah, different. Yeah, but your the roster changes. Game, the vertical okay, pass go, game, where let, let's go was it wasn't it. That was 40 years ago. That was 40 He's years ago. He's throwing to Rasheed Rice. Yeah, but, they, but Rasheed Rice, number one, is a solid rookie. No doubt. They also He's have, a second rounder. They also have a generational tight end. Okay. And it is Patrick Mahomes. You have multiple it Patrick Mahomes, generational positions. And it is positions. Andy Reid. And it is Andy Reid, and there's a good offensive line. Kyle's right there. Like, he's not Andy, but he's right there. I mean, do do the do it yourself. Do it, do it in your head. Andy Reid goes number one if we're going coach's draft. I think a lot of people are taking McVay number two. Wow, McVay number two? He's got now. the Super Bowl. Oh. Kyle is not getting out of the top five. Is he? No, he's not. Yeah, but okay, I'm just, so I'm you have saying, a top five just, head coach I'm just, at worst. I'm just, I'm just wow, McVay. Now, because he's two. got the Super Bowl. All right, so you have a top five oh, head coach. You've got the best running back on the planet. You've got the best left tackle in the league. You've got one of the best tight ends in franchise history. Like that, you don't utilize in big games. <laughs> It's, it's, he got three. He got four targets. <laughs> Asking, he got two catches, four yards in the Super I'm just ball. saying, you How can't. How many big games did we watch George Kittle everything. stay in and block? Part of the Kyle Kyle Shanahan thing is that I am trusting. This is why I'm paying him twenty million dollars a year. Is I trust him to figure out the skill positions. He'll find guys. He found Kittle. He found Debo. Well, Heck, was, he found Ayuk. We we always talk about two way players. Two way players in the NBA. Two way players. Brendan Ayuk is a two way wide receiver. He is. He he you can play him one. on every single down. But okay. You can't say that about all, every wide receiver of football. Just like the Warriors, you couldn't keep Bogut and Barnes and bring in Durant, right? Well, so yeah, you have well, to make was, tough decisions. A, well, that was an easy decision. Well, uh, <laughs> Come on. Harrison Barnes? Well, I think this is an easy decision. <laughs> that was an easy, that was if a, you're asking me, CMC making 18 million and Trent making 20 okay. or Brandon Ayuk making 30, I'm taking right. CMC and Trent. But, but be careful with Brandon Christian McCaffrey. Because the numbers tell you that year after when you get all these touches, can, do me a favor. And I'll put my guys on the spot, but they respond well when I put them on the spot. Love it. Spadoni. They're built for adversity. Spadoni, do me a favor and find the baldy sound. Because I remember we were having to argue about and I was like all for Chris McCaffrey touches because I was saying you can't take him off the football field, not on this team. There's a cut. I forget when it was. It was just asking about touches. It was me. And, and it, it asked about touches because you were so worried about touches. Baldy said that next year, when a guy has touches, he said something to the effect that it, it's not always pretty. Now, I don't, I'm not wishing injury on nobody. On nobody. On nobody. But that is the thing we have to think about. And we have to think about Trent Williams. We have to think about Debo. We got to think about Kittle. They're built to miss games. Ayuk has been durable for this football team, man. I'm just not with trading away wide receivers not getting anything back away from I don't think the Niners are that. either. I think this is a situation. Oh, here it is right where, here. Where, here, here. Here it is, November 14th, Brian Baldinger. Well, if you just said 20 carries a game, I mean, the 49ers want to play 20 games this year. Mm -hmm. That's 400 touches. He did that once in Carolina, and he was on the shelf for the next two years. Uh, on and off the shelf. Like, it's just too much. It just is. They, they, you look at the wear and tear that those guys take and the way that he runs between the tackles, I just think you better get, you know, whether it's Mitchell or Mason or somebody like touches and get them some rhythm. I, I think you got to preserve them to a degree, especially if it's a runaway game. Right. Like, you got to you got to find ways to get them off the field. 400 touches is too much. 300 right. is where you're trying to, to get to. But... That that's not going to be enough. So now you bake on the depth of the 49ers running back uh, the backfield with Elijah Mitchell and these young hot shot running backs and young man out of Louisville. What's his name? Garendo Isaac Garendo. We'll see. He's reporting today. We'll see a lot of them uh, next week at training camp. So now nah, it's just it's just a lot going on, man. Because now the domino effect when you don't have all these pieces to the puzzle and one of these guys go out, we saw how this offense looks. We see it. Debo goes out in the Green Bay game and this offense struggled. Brock Purdy throwing behind guys. I you slip in, Kittle's dropping passes. It just doesn't look the same. And then we saw it live and direct in the Super Bowl. 
Man, Debo can't run down. God not to watch it. He's to take the place of Debo Samuel. But isn't that kind of telling to you that in the biggest game of the year and, and also the game prior to that, like the head coach and the entire team was like, yeah, that, this is a Debo game. Even though it didn't materialize that way, that it, to me tells me how it, they're viewing everyone well, in the pecking order. Well, that and that's a mistake. And it was a massive mistake. As we see, as we see Brock Purdy in overtime not be able to get a pass off. And Brendan Ayuk after and Baldy had that cut too. I saw Brendan Ayuk. He Baldy joined us the first thing he said without we didn't even ask him a question. Brendan Ayuk jukes the hell out of Jerry Sneed who gets top dollar in Tennessee. And he's sitting there in the back of the end zone like, why? How many times have we seen Brendan Ayuk run a drag route wide open? He goes, why? 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 I don't know, man. I just It just feels like here in our bubble, we underrate, Bren, we underrate Brendan Ayuk just a little bit. Collectively as a fan base. Who thinks he stinks? It's not that he stinks. I say we think we oh, we underrate him and his so, okay, value. Well, I think he's probably I don't know. I didn't say stink. It's not just, hey, is yeah, he but, great but, or is he stink? There's a middle ground I here. think everyone is in unison. He's a really good player. But he's not of the echelon of Justin Jefferson. He's right. just not. Okay, it's not. There's there's three guys in that category: Tyreek, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson. I might even put Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, when you listen to Dan Campbell talk, Dan Campbell says he is our engine. Okay, he's our entire team. Okay, he like he says he's the heartbeat of the team. Okay, and like when you listen to Kittle talk about Debo, he's like, yeah, like. Debo is a lot on offense, and, and well, they, they mean, obviously love Christian McCaffrey, but he referenced I, it multiple it, times. It's funny that we need the receiver, Doc, to go to that route because a lot of people last year told me, Debo, trade his ass. Trade him. We don't need Debo. We already got McCaffrey. Trade him, trade him, trade him, trade him, trade him. That's all I heard last season. That's all I heard the last two years. Now, all of a sudden, now you want this new money, and we want to get rid of this guy. I'm not in the business of getting rid of good players. I don't want to get rid of good players. But he is comparable to St. Brown. He's comparable to Jalen Waddle. He's comparable to Devontae Smith. He's comparable to, hell, A.J. Brown. And I'm, once I, you got out there.